The Cleveland Browns are a franchise that has been the butt of a lot of jokes. Decades of losing awful quarterback play and hilariously incompetent coaches. This year, though, it looks like things might be different. The Browns have made some outstanding moves this offseason, and the roster is looking great. I think the team is ready to make some noise in 2023. Let's get into it. You can't build a good team without nailing your draft picks, and it looks like Cleveland may have done just that. Due to some trades, Cleveland didn't pick until 73rd overall, but they made the absolute most of the picks that they did have. Here are my favorites. At 73rd overall, they took wide receiver Cedric Tillman out of Tennessee. He is a great frame at 6'3", and often looked better than his teammate Jalen Hyatt did. I can definitely see Tillman contributing right now and stepping into a bigger role down the road. Cleveland needs wide receivers past Amari Cooper, and they nailed this pick. Excellent value. At 98th overall, the team selected defensive tackle Siaki Aika out of Baylor. The reason a projected second round talent fell this far is due to potential medical issues, but if you can stay healthy, the Browns got awesome value. Aika is an absolute mountain of a man at 6'3 and 335 pounds, and should be a great run stuffer on Cleveland's interior defensive line, something the team really needs. At 111th overall, the team chose offensive tackle Dewan Jones from Ohio State. Jones stands at an opposing 6'8 and 374 pounds. Given his size, he also has super long arms and massive hands. He's obviously also a very powerful blocker, especially in the run game. There have been some concerns about him being top heavy given his height, but if he could work that out, he'll be an excellent piece for Cleveland's offensive line now and later. The team also snagged his teammate, center Luke Weipler, later in the draft, and I think that's stupendous value on both these picks. Overall, they landed some guys with massive upside and got great value this draft working with what they had. The team also nailed free agency, addressing their positions of need with smart signings. They signed Dalvin Tomlinson from the Vikings, and while he cost a lot, the team desperately needed a powerful run-stuffing defensive tackle on the interior of their line, and Tomlinson is top of the line in that area. They also signed safety Juan Thornhill from the Chiefs. Only 27, he made 52 starts over the last four years in Kansas City and played at a high level. He's a massive upgrade in Cleveland secondary and should provide an instant boost. Marquise Goodwin and Agbo Okoronkwo are also sneaky good signings that could provide the team a lot of value. The front office also pulled off two great trades. Firstly, they moved back in the draft to acquire speedy Jets wide receiver Elijah Moore, who is only 23 years old and is looking great at OTAs so far. Then, the team traded two fifth round picks for Zadarius Smith, a sixth rounder, and a seventh rounder. These are both great moves. The team needed a wide receiver too, and Moore should provide that. He's also super young and can grow a lot as a player still. Smith, on the other hand, is getting older, but it was great value. The Browns were looking for more help in the defensive line, and Smith should provide that. He's getting older, sure, but has a ton of career production and experience. It's difficult to forecast how well he's really going to do this year. He led the league in sacks for the first few weeks in 2022, but his production tapered off sharply after that. There are some questions, but at the price, it's an excellent move. I love both these trades for the Browns. Now, let's go through the roster quickly to break down how the team is looking after all that. Starting us off on offense, at quarterback, they have Deshaun Watson. It was somewhat expected to see him struggle after a lot of time off, so I think he'll look like his old self for 2023. I don't like the guy at all, but the fact of the matter is that he's previously been an excellent NFL quarterback. At wide receiver, they have Amari Cooper, Elijah Moore, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Marquise Goodwin, and Cedric Tillman. Cooper is coming off a season in which he had 1,160 yards plus 9 touchdowns, He's one of the better wideouts in the league. Or, Peoples-Jones, Tillman, and Goodwin should do an excellent job covering the wide receiver two and three spots, leaving the team with plenty of solid options. At tight end, David Njoku is holding down the fort. He recorded 628 yards in 14 games last season and is a very solid option. As far as the running back room goes, the team is one of the best backs in the league with the ever-reliable Nick Chubb. There's not a lot of depth past him, but if he can stay healthy, he's in for another big year. The offensive line should be good again, protecting Watson and paving running lanes for Chubb. A good offense is built on a good offensive line, and Cleveland's will be very helpful. On the other side of the ball, the defensive line is looking surprisingly good. Inside, the team is veteran Dalvin Tomlinson along with third-round pick Siaki Aika. On the edge, Cleveland will line up the dominant pass rusher Miles Garrett, who is among the best in the league at his position. Darius Smith and Agbo Okoronkwo will provide some solid help for Garrett off the other edge, a much-improved unit across the board. The team also has some solid pieces at linebacker. Veteran Anthony Walker Jr. will likely headline the unit, while the young Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa looks to step up. The secondary is looking pretty nice as well. The team has two great former first-round picks at cornerback in Denzel Ward and Greg Newsome, plus they got a massive upgrade at safety with Juan Thornhill. 
Let's draw some conclusions. I've heard some Browns hype, and after actually looking into the roster that the team has put together, I see why. The team still does have some iffy spots, but overall, savvy moves by the front office have ensured that there aren't that many holes. The Bengals are still the team to beat in the AFC North, but I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Cleveland in the playoffs this year.